हेलो एवरीवन गुड मॉर्निंग हाउ आर यू गाइस दिस इज श्रेयस योर योर मास्टर टीचर फॉर फिजिक्स एट वेदांतु एंड वेलकम अबोर्ड टुडे दिस मंडे मॉर्निंग वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस द प्रॉब्लम्स व्हिच आई हैव गिवन यू ऑन सैटरडे व्हिच वाज देयर इन द डिस्क्रिप्शन लिंक एज वेल एज द टेलीग्राम लिंक वेयर यू गेट few problems to solve on a regular basis to test your skills and to boost up your performance and also to make sure you have the habit of solving problems at home and not just see the problems which i do or any other teacher does and that is the speciality of these flash series in flash series we are going to cover all the major chapters which you are going to require for your january attempt and then we are also going to boost your performance for the next attempt and then for the je advanced so all those droppers all those people who are going to give the exam in 2021 that is the 12th standard students as well this series is meant for you and if you are in 11th standard even then this series is meant for you because we are going to cover the 11th standard portion as well which is there in je mains and je advanced and any other competitive exam of that nature all right so flash drills is a part of flash series where we give you daily practice problems and in the morning we discuss all the solutions so this is a brief introduction about me and i keep posting regularly on stress_vedantu that's my official instagram handle all right and you can talk interact with me over there as well and for those of you who do not know i have uh, been teaching for quite some time now yes and lot of my students are in iits nits you name it and whatever problems whatever methodologies i have applied on them i want it to spread throughout the country so that there are so many more there are so many more students who will crack the je exam who will get their dream whatever they have thought of that's my motto okay so having said that let me also tell you the timetable tonight we are going to do instead of this actually i'm going to do in integration so it's kinematics but it is integration we are going to do integration based problems tonight and then tomorrow it's going to be newton's laws and free body diagram and then a special lecture just dedicated for pulley strings and those multiple pulley problems and then the non inertial or the pseudo forces and then the frictional force so that's the time table for this week it's going to be at 7 pm yes 7 pm sharp every day roughly the lecture timing will be around 1 hour to 1 hour 15 minutes okay because that much time needs to be devoted per topic and that's what i feel i know a lot of people do not devote that much time and i feel that we then do not do that much justice on the youtube platform so that's why i have split up the topics very neatly and making sure that every topic is understood in detail okay so uh all the new students out here do not forget to subscribe or else you'll miss out on the other drill discussions which we are going to conduct and once you watch this video do not forget to like and share this video with your friends that will make me really happy guys because i need your support for spreading this ocean of knowledge which i have all right so please do not forget to like subscribe and share all right so let's get going with our first question out here uh you have that there is a person who is traveling with a speed of minus i cap units and the rain is falling with a velocity of 4i plus 5j the question is what is the relative speed of the rain okay let's try to do this first let's try and remember what was the formula for the relative velocity of the rain with respect to the person now the best part about the problem is that the velocities are given in i cap and j cap which is the unit vector notation of any vector remember in the previous session yesterday night we had done couple of problems where it was not in i cap j cap the magnitude was given direction was given in degrees and stuff like that well in those problems you need to resolve the components and stuff like that you need to use geometry for solving problem here it's much simpler and that's what you are about to see what is the velocity of the rain with respect to man we have seen the formula it is nothing but velocity of the rain minus velocity of the man that's about it nothing more nothing less 
So just substitute the values. What is velocity of the rain? Well, it is 4 i cap plus 5 j cap. That's vr minus what is vm? That's minus i cap. Now, if you remember correctly, in vectors, i components get added up only with i components. j components get added or subtracted only with j components. So 4i minus minus is plus. So it will become nothing but 5i cap plus 5j cap. Now that's your velocity of the rain with respect to the man. But we are not yet there. So let's think about it, what this actually means. 5i cap and 5j five, five cap. If this is my x-axis, this is my y-axis. Okay. Uh, understand what this means is, Okay, there is one catch though. If I take x-axis there and y-axis upwards, the velocity comes in the first quadrant. So most likely the x and y-axis are going to be oriented a little bit differently because the rain can't come like this and the earth won't be showering rain. So I know usually we take y-axis as upwards. So what we can do over here, we can take x-axis as horizontal and y-axis as downwards. The reason why I'm doing that, if you observe carefully, look at the rain velocity. It is 4i cap, right? And 5j cap. Usually we take j upwards. But if I take j upwards, then rain can't come like that, right? But if I take 4i plus 5j, then the rain is coming at an angle like this. Then I feel that is much better. Okay? So let's just orient it. But that won't affect our answer, let me tell you. How you choose the axis. This is just a way of choosing your sign convention, but let's just go with the problem data, nothing more about it. So 5i cap is something like this. So this is 5i cap and 5j cap because y positive is downwards. So let's choose 5j cap here. Therefore, the resultant will be here. So this is going to be vrm vector. That's your vrm vector guys. That is the way in which you will represent it geometrically on paper. Now, the question is what? What is the speed and what is um, the direction also, I suppose, that's what is asked. So, think about it, what this angle should be. This angle, you can clearly see this is a right angle triangle, both sides are congruent. So, obviously, this angle has to be 45 degrees. This is an isosceles right angle triangle. Not just that, even this value, Vrm, right? Vrm will be root of 5 square plus 5 square. And what is 5 square plus 5 square? It is 5 root 2. That's the answer. So the answer is 45 degrees and 5 root 2 units of speed. That's about it. So I believe that is given in the option A. Option A is correct. So 5 root 2 and 45 degrees. The only confusing part probably could have been, yeah, why is this vector in first quadrant so don't worry the coordinate axis itself i have shifted it i have rotated it so as to make it look more real that's all okay so remember iit's j examiners are capable of changing the convention instead of traditionally taking x here y here they can change x that side and y that side yes there have been situations where they have done that so this problem was meant to tell you, you can take any sign convention uh, what, uh, or maybe the examiner himself can choose his own sign convention and give it to you. Okay, so next question. Snow is falling vertically at constant speed of 5 meters per second and you have to find at what angle from the vertical does the snowflake appear as viewed by the driver sitting inside the car and who is traveling on a straight road with a speed of 18 root 3 kilometers per hour. This problem is no different from the Rain Man problem. Yes, and I'll tell you how. Just imagine. Okay, so there is this car which is traveling at a speed of, let's say, 18 root 3 kilometers per hour. That's the speed of the car traveling on a rebel road. And snow is falling with a speed of 5 meters per second and that is vertically downwards so that is velocity of the snow which is 5 meters per second uh, now this is meter per second this is kilometers per hour that's the first catch 
convert it into one unit okay so let's convert it into one unit i believe let's convert it into meters per second and we know to convert kilometers per hour into meters per second we need to multiply it by 5 by 18 correct so if i multiply this by 5 by 18 18 18 goes and i'll be only left with 5 root 3 meters per second so now everything is in meters per second so it's easy for us to handle next step what is the angle at which the snowflakes appear to the driver of the car that means what i need is velocity of the snowflakes with respect to the car and we all know how to calculate this relative velocity recollect the formula v12 is v1 minus v2 so vsc guys is nothing but vs vector minus vc vector okay so i need to perform vector subtraction so let's see how do i do that it's very easy it's not that difficult vs vector has to be taken as it is but the next vector that you will take is minus vc vector so please recollect that vector subtraction is nothing but vector addition only but just that one of the vectors has to be flipped and then added to the next vector so here is how it is going to look like my vs vector is going to be downwards but vc vector is going to be flipped and that will give you minus vc vector and the resultant guys will be your velocity of the snowflakes with respect to the car that's about it now what are the values oh well when i flip this the magnitude never changes so this is still 5 root 3 of course and this is nothing but still 5 in magnitude of course this is 90 degrees because it was given that snow is falling vertically down so the question is what angle does it make over here can't you see that tan of theta is 5 root 3 divided by adjacent side which is 5 which is going to make it look like root 3 that means that clearly tells me theta is 60 degrees with the vertical that's the answer that's the answer guys isn't it so simple just use trigonometry geometry little bit of visualizations here and there and that's it you got the answer so believe me these rain man problems this relative velocity problems this boat swimmer problems are not difficult it's all about geometry and little bit of visualization here and there okay so that's my aim of these drill questions so let's go to the next question then you can always rewind back the session later on and you can see how i have done it in case you still have a doubt but i have tried to explain it in as much detail as possible the next question says there is a person whose velocity in still water is 5 swims from point a to a point b downstream and back again to point a the velocity of the river is 3 what is the time taken by the man in going down coming up and the total average speed very interesting question so let's see how to solve this okay so let's take few points and let's see how do we go about it so this is point a let's say this is point b and the distance between them is given to be how much 80 meters so i'm going to mark the distance 80 meters where is the river flowing well the person starts from point a and then goes to point b so point b is downstream so that means river is flowing this way with a speed of three meters per second keep that in mind that the river right which is there it is flowing towards this side with a speed of three meters per second great now initially when he swims with respect to the river with a speed of five meters per second downstream he is not only swimming five meters per second with respect to the river but also the river is carrying him with that additional three meters per second so understand the river gives him a push of three and he himself swims downstream with a speed of five so the net speed with which he travels from here to here think about it guys the net speed will be five plus three which is going to be eight meters per second but that is down the stream okay so that is down the stream that's how he travels now when he comes back right so when he comes back understand the river is coming this way he's trying to swim with the speed of five 
when he tries to swim with a speed of 5 with respect to the river the river pulls him back 3 meters behind he swims 5 units river pulls him back 3 units so effectively he has traveled only 2 units this side so his velocity up the stream will be 5 minus 3 which is 2 meters per second but that is of course upstream now that much data is needed for finding everything in this problem nothing more is needed so let's try this out so what is the time taken downstream so time taken downstream will be distance which is 80 guys divided by speed which is 8 and that is going to give you 10 seconds that's it that's the answer for the first part right time taken to go downstream is just 10 seconds so similarly what is the time taken to go up what is the distance obviously again 80 and what is the speed check it out it is just 2 so 80 divided by 2 guys is nothing but 40 seconds so going down 10 going up 40 and if somebody asks you what is the total time then 10 plus 40 that is going to be 50 seconds now what else do I need to find out think about it it's given that you not only have to find the time taken to go down and up but also the average speed of the man during the entire motion so recollect the definition of average speed average speed guys was total distance how much is the total distance 80 downstream 80 upstream so 80 plus 80 divided by how much time did it take we just calculated it right so it will be nothing but 50 guys okay so that's it 80 plus 80 160 160 divided by 50 which is 16 by 5 and that is meters per second of course you can put it in decimals that's not a big deal i hope you guys have understood how to solve this simple one dimensional relative question on river man swimming okay concept okay so let's go ahead if you guys have understood this to the next question so like we discussed time to go down is 10 time to go up is 40 seconds and the total average speed 16 by 5 which is 3.2 meters per second all right guys now let's go to the next question question number four where there was a river given of width 400 meters and the river is flowing at the rate of 2 boat is sailing at a velocity of 10 perpendicular to the flow of the water and how far from the point directly opposite to the starting point does the boat reach and what is the direction in which the boat moves these are the two questions so let's see how do we solve this question so let's do it part by part so first we are going to find what is the drift that it encounters and then we'll also find the directions right so let's start this it's not that difficult okay so first let me draw the diagram that will be better the width of the river is 400 meters that is what is given okay and the boat moves with a velocity of 10 that means this is 10 this is the velocity of the boat the river is moving with a speed of 2 let's say this way so that is 2 meters per second and it was given to us that the boat's velocity is perpendicular to the flow of the river do not forget that now because of that the resultant velocity of the boat will be somewhere like this and you will see the person will end up reaching here let's say I call it point B but his intended path was somewhere over here let's say that is A and this distance X is how much he got drifted away and this point O is his starting point all right so this is what is the diagram going to look like now we need to figure out what is the drift how do we find the drift the first thing to find out the drift guys is to first find the time taken to cross so let's figure out how much is the time taken to cross the river now i have given this to you in the previous session yesterday or on saturday night that the time taken to cross is independent of the speed of the river yes river is going this way you are crossing this way how will river velocity affect you when you're crossing like this correct so only that velocity perpendicular to the bank matters so time is actually distance by speed so time is distance between the banks divided by the velocity which is perpendicular 
to the bank. That's all that matters. Luckily, this velocity of the boat is exactly perpendicular. Else, if it was at an angle, you're going to split that velocity into two components and only worry about this component because this component is not going to help you cross the river in this direction. Keep that in mind. Now just substitute. What is the distance? 400. What is the velocity? 10. So what will be the time? 40 seconds. Now this is the time taken to cross the river. Next question was, actually time was not even asked, but we need to find it out for the drift. So the drift, which was there, which I going to represent it by the symbol X, will be the time that you spend inside the river into the velocity in the X direction. What is the velocity in that direction? See, you have spent 40 seconds inside the river and you're continuously pushed with a speed of two. So you were pushed with a speed of two, you're dragged along. And how much time did you spend? You spent 40 seconds. So 42 is 80. So 80 meters is your drift. Okay, so you have drifted 80 meters. That's quite some amount just because the river was moving even with a small speed of two meters per second. That's nice. Now, the only question left is to find the angle which your boat makes with the flow of the river. Understand, this is the direction of the flow. This is the direction in which the boat ends up going. So what they are asking is this angle theta. So I can also find this angle theta. And we all know in that small little triangle out there, tan theta is opposite, which is 10, divided by adjacent, which is 2. So that is nothing but 5. So that implies theta is how much? Theta, guys, is nothing but tan inverse of 5. That's your answer. So tan inverse of 5 is the direction in which the boat moves with respect to the flow and the drift encountered is 80 meters. That's your answer. Interesting question. So you can take a screenshot, obviously, if you want to. And we are going to go to the next and the last question. So 80 meters and tan inverse of 5. Now, regarding the last question. Okay, so the person is moving with the speed of 3 and finds the rain to fall vertically. And then when he changes the direction, maintains the same speed, he finds the rain to fall at 45 degrees. So the question is, what is the velocity of the rain? Now, okay, one second, guys. Okay, so... What we are going to need is one equation, which is velocity of rain with respect to man. Remember, I have told you this again and again. Vrm is nothing but Vr vector minus Vm vector, which you can also write it as Vr vector plus negative of Vm vector. Okay. Now, let's assume something as east and something as west. Let's take this as east and let's take this as west. And in the first scenario, when he walks with speed of 3 towards the east, okay, while walking east, he finds the rain falling vertically downwards. Okay, so vertically downwards means, think about it, it is like this. This is Vrm in the first situation when he is walking east. But since the person is walking there, the negative Vm vector will be this way. Think about it. Negative Vm vector. Vm vector is that way, but negative Vm vector will be this way. And do not forget, Vrm is the resultant vector. So please do not put minus Vm here because I'm not adding Vrm and Vm. No. In fact, I'm finding a vector whose resultant will be Vrm. So be careful when doing this addition. So do not put Vm over here. In fact, it will be here. This is minus Vm vector in the first case. And this Vr, which is the velocity of the rain. Yes, this Vr plus minus Vm is this vector. That is what this equation says. Take a moment to realize this. This is the resultant, not this. Vr plus minus vm is vrm okay so understand that okay so now let's talk about the next case in the next case what is he doing instead of moving east 
he moves west. So where is west? This way. But remember always you have to negate the man's velocity. If he's moving this way, the negative velocity will be this side. So vr vector plus negative vm vector in the second situation. That is guys going to give me the resultant velocity. So or relative velocity of the rain with respect to the man in the second case. That's it. Now my triangle is complete. The trick I have used over here is to draw both the triangles of vector subtraction on the same diagram because I know in both the situations the rain's actual velocity with respect to the ground has not changed. Yes, it has not changed. So combining both of them is going to be advantageous for me. And you will see how simple this problem is. This is 90. According to the given question, the rain falls at 45 degrees in the second situation. So this VRM with the vertical makes 45 degrees. So naturally, this is also 45 degrees. The person's velocity is 3. So this much is 3. And next time he just reverses the direction. So speed remains unchanged. If this is 3, this is 3. Obviously, this one is 6. In this big triangle, if this one is 6, obviously, this height of the triangle is also 6. No doubt about it. In this small triangle, if this height is 6, this is 3. How much is this much? It's very simple. So Vr is root of 6 square plus 3 square. This is 36 plus 9, which is 45, which is nothing but, guys, 3 root 5. Everything was in kilometers per hour. So let's put kilometers per hour. That's the answer. How simple this is using geometry. Otherwise, it would be so difficult if you do it by some weird formulas. That's the beauty of this solution. That's why these drill sessions are very important because you learn very, very nice techniques, different techniques of solving problems. These are very nicely tailored problems for you guys so that you improve on your knowledge, guys. Like I've been telling you again and again. Okay, so that was this question and the answer was 3 root 5 kilometers per hour. And tonight, do not forget guys, the session is going to be conducted on, yeah, integration. Because a lot of people have been demanding that. So a session on integration, how to use that in kinematics and that is in itself a very difficult problem. Yes, so we're going to conduct that tonight at 7 p.m. and then tomorrow, Newton's laws and then continued. So do not forget to attend those sessions and also attend the drill discussion sessions. All right. Okay. And if you want to stay updated, you want to get all the extracts, the drills, you want to get the session notes and all the notifications. Do not forget to join the Telegram group is the official Telegram group of V and Thu's channel. All right. Okay. So also guys, please hit the like button that will really inspire me to conduct more, more of these sessions. Remember, the only energy I get is from your love and your support. So do not forget to like, share and subscribe. I cannot stress on this fact more. Okay, so that's all. Bye. Guys, bye bye. Take care. Have a safe stay at home and study well, prepare well, solve all the problems. Come prepared for tonight's session. Okay, bye bye. Take care.